very good evening to everyone. We welcome all of you on behalf of Friday Waters, an initiative for the W4W Foundation. The main idea is to make Fridays fun-filled and yet fruitful activities for the future generations. The focus of the Water Thesis Club is to bring in the students, scholars who have done or are doing a thesis on water matters to the session in order to discuss with them the making of the thesis the making of the thesis and the issues around the subject covered. So why lakes are important for us? As today's topic is interlinking the lakes. Uh, interlinking lakes, decision support tools for lake planning. So we welcome Mehak Kotecha who has graduated from Indu Bhai Parikh School of Architecture, Rajkot. In her undergraduate thesis, she focused on studying lakes in Ahmedabad as lost spaces, along with several academic excellence awards during her architectural education. She also received the best thesis award. NAC has keen interest in learning and exploring interdisciplinary studies related to ecology, landscape, architecture, and planning. She recently completed her master's in geo-information science and earth observations specializing in urban planning and management at the Fidelity IPC, University of Trent, the Netherlands. Her research focused on interlinked lakes in Ahmedabad and developed the support tool for the lake planning and management. So the lakes we see in our areas, a lot of lakes has been destroyed because of this urbanization. Lot of concrete structures, lands, roads has been built, which has reduced the catchment area, which are drying up, due to which our lakes are drying up. So we welcome Mahak Kotecha so that she can uh, give us knowledge about how interlinking the lakes can support and uh, beneficial to our lake system. So welcome Mahak. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, should I begin? Yes. yes okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for uh, having me. It's a great opportunity and a platform for me. Uh, so my research was on interlinked lakes in Ahmedabad, and uh, I developed a decision support tool uh, for lake planning and management. Um, uh, so for a brief background, uh, ODA identified in Ahmedabad uh, 630 lakes in 1999, and out of these 72, 79 lakes were identified as uh, urban lakes. And this number has drastically reduced to 122 lakes in 2020. Uh, and uh, as a part of lake development and planning, uh, ODA has uh, been interlinking lakes, which is also considered as an experimental project and also still under constant debate between the experts, among the experts and the residents. Uh, so this project was initiated in 2004 and uh, 44 lakes in the western part of uh, Ahmedabad were identified for interlinking and the first phase was implemented uh, where eight lakes were interlinked in the first phase. Uh, so this uh, interlinking of lakes in Ahmedabad uh, focused on two major kinds of uh, interventions. So, uh, Interlinking uh, relates to the development uh, in the lake itself, within the lake area and outside the lake area. And between these two, uh, some social, environmental and economic factors were uh, addressed like uh, provision of sewerage system, rainwater line, uh, desilting for better percolation and uh, for uh, uh, percolation bore well at the bottom of the lake under the environmental factors. Uh, relocation, rehabilitation of slum dwellers, uh, re reclamation, uh, evacuation of the encroachment for, uh, from the periphery and development of uh, amusement parks, gardens, uh, and everything as uh, public spaces under the social factor. So there were some uh, factors that were considered under the project of interlinking uh, uh, these lakes. And uh, uh, my research focused mainly on identifying the problem in this interlinking as it also uh, was, uh, it is uh, facing several issues, several social and uh, mainly ecological issues. So uh, 
when the lakes are interlinked, it has some impacts uh, when it is exposed to interlinking and it has a, a response and uh, effects on the condition of the lake. So for example, uh, if we consider the environmental uh, uh, factors. So if the water is polluted in one lake, it affects all the interlinked lakes and it affects the aquatic life, it affects the groundwater quality, it affects the flora and fauna in and around the lake. So there is an overall environmental degradation or the ecological condition of the lake is, uh, uh, is harmed and this affects the lake and results in the decay of the water body and the loss of ecosystem services. Uh, so the problem identified in the study was that uh, not all environmental, social, and economic factors are considered when they are interlinking the lakes. And uh, due to these missing factors, there, there are some uh, impacts on the lakes which affects uh, us, uh, but it also affects mainly the water body itself. Uh, so uh, I, ident if, uh, I chose six lakes uh, which were interlinked in the first phase of interlinking. And uh, the identified knowledge gap was that there was a need to systematically study the multidimensional values of the interlinked lakes. And this, by studying these multidimensional values, it can help us uh, or the planners for decision making. Uh, so these six lakes were uh, studied uh, and uh, this was the final output. So uh, I, I uh, calculated the sustainability index scores of these six lakes. And this index course gave the uh, overview of what is the current condition of the lakes based on uh, the considered social, environmental, and economic dimension, which I will discuss in the further slide. So this was the final output that, OK, uh, this is the current condition of the lake. Uh, and what can be done uh, based on this course for decision making? And now we'll look into how these scores were derived. So the decision support tool was uh, mainly developed uh, in four major steps. The first step was to develop the multi-criteria index, uh, which is uh, to know what factors are important in the context of Ahmedabad, in the context of uh, the lakes, interlinked lakes in Ahmedabad, uh, which factors uh, are important. And this was uh, first studied by uh, literature review. And then to support that, to contextualize that, uh, uh, expert interviews were conducted uh, and the index was finalized for the case of Ahmedabad. Uh, in the second step, uh, the weight of these factors in the index, so the, the relativity of which factors are more important, which factors are less important. Um, these, these weights were identified uh, in the, for the factors in the index, and this was done by using the Delphi method, which is the consensus building exercise, uh, also with the experts. Uh, in the third step, uh, when we have the factors and the weights, uh, data related to uh, these factors were uh, collected use, uh, from primary and secondary uh, sources and uh, the processing and analysis of uh, the data collected was done. Uh, and in the last step, when uh, I had everything, all the three of the uh, main steps, uh, the multi-criteria evaluation was done using the uh, definite model and uh, the results uh, interpretation uh, gave us uh, gave insights into uh, what what this uh, uh, scores mean and how can be it how can it be used for decision making uh, and these uh, results were also shared uh, with the experts and uh, a panel discussion was uh, conducted uh, to discuss the applicability of the tool in practice also. Uh, so we'll look into each of the steps. Um, so the first step, uh, like I said, that uh, 11 expert interviews were conducted to validate and contextualize the index after uh, studying the global literature. And uh, the index was uh, uh, structured under three main uh, dimension, which was the three pillars of sustainability, social, environmental, and economic. And relevant factors under uh, these three dimensions uh, were identified. Uh, so there were 19 factors uh, uh, and 37 indicators. So indicators uh, are, were identified to uh, understand how can we measure this uh, identified factor. 
So the main purpose of the index was to measure the degree of sustainability of interlinked lakes. Uh, and uh, the, the figure on the right shows the final index. In the second step, the weight of the factors had to be identified and uh, this was done using the Delphi method. So uh, this index was shared with uh, the experts and uh, there was three round of Delphi method and how that was done was that uh, it was done anonymously and the survey form was shared with uh, all the experts and they had to rank the uh, all each of the factors, uh, each of these 19 factors uh, at a scale of one to five based on its importance. And uh, uh, there were three rounds done. And from the second round, the experts could see the answer of other experts anonymously. So they can either change their answer uh, and uh, or they cannot, uh, they can stick to what they have answered. And this consensus grows uh, as each round is uh, done. Uh, so there were three rounds conducted and there were total number of seven responses from the experts. So there were seven experts uh, who participated and uh, the uh, targeted consensus was 70%, but uh, this was achieved for nine out of 19 factors. And uh, the change in consensus uh, uh, was seen uh, more prominently in round two. And uh, in round three, there, there, there was also seen that uh, uh, there was not much difference uh, after round three. So for only four uh, factors increased in consensus and actually four were, four were, were seen decreased, which, are, which is this, for example, uh, the used value of the lake factor decreased this consensus in round three. Uh, so this was quite interesting to see, uh, but uh, I, I think that if, uh, uh, from from what I uh, so this was the method that uh, I also experimented for the first time. So maybe if uh, uh, it was not an anonymous survey and if the experts could come together on the same table, that would be more interesting. And also uh, maybe this consensus would uh, I don't know what the results would be, but it would be definitely more interesting if the conversations were, were more direct because the experts belong from very different backgrounds. And uh, they, was, they, were, they had like uh, different experience with water uh, bodies or lakes in Ahmedabad or, and some experts were also uh, from outside Ahmedabad, but still from India. So they, they know the context. And uh, uh, yeah, it would, I think uh, that was one of the limitations that uh, I could not do uh, achieve 70% uh, consensus for all the factors. Uh, but for uh, factors like stakeholder participation and uh, another factor is monitoring and assessment tools. Uh, for these two factors, 100% consensus was achieved uh, and it was ranked as the most or very high uh, important factor. Uh, and this was also one of the most common feedbacks uh, received from the experts during the interviews, uh, which was done in step one. Uh, so from this, uh, the weights of the factors were identified and uh, the final result uh, was that the environmental uh, uh, dimension received the most uh, received the highest uh, weight followed by the social followed by the economic so now uh, the data related to uh, all the indicators had to be uh, collected and this was done uh, using these four uh, this was done in these four ways. So uh, the on-field observations, interview with other stakeholders on the field, uh, interview uh, with the users of the lake and uh, uh, data from the government organization was done on field, which was for 29 out of 37 indicators. And uh, other open data sources uh, was also used. And this was for eight out of 37 indicators. And uh, the computation method of uh, all measuring all the indicators was uh, designed to derive a score. And uh, for some of the indicators, uh, we had to use the proxy indicators because the direct data was not available. And uh, two indicators had to be removed because uh, there was the, I, I could not find any data related to it. It did not exist practically. Uh, so data for all this was collected and uh, First, all the three steps were uh, used as an input in the model and the 
uh, multi criteria evaluation software the definite 3.1 version which is developed by the uh, university of amsterdam was uh, used and the index the weights and the evaluation uh, was uh, as inputs in the uh, model like i said and the uh, cost and benefit uh, settings like uh, which indicator is uh, a cost to the index or a benefit to the index was uh, also given as an input and uh, the standardization method uh, was uh, also mentioned and uh, the other uh, what the tool gave as an output was uh, the sustainability index score which is the relative scores uh, based on the inputs uh, given in the model and these scores were uh, as an output which is visualized on this map uh, so as we can see uh, from the map uh, the more overall uh, scores were still uh, balanced for all the three dimensions so these circles they show the score of uh, uh, each of the dimensions so the yellow is the social dimension the green is the environmental dimension and the uh, purplish is the economic dimension and these are the final scores of the lakes uh, so uh, thaltej lake Uh, scored the lowest, uh, which was 0.33, and uh, Vastrapur uh, Lake scored the highest, which was 0.54. Uh, this was actually not expected. Uh, I did not expect this results, uh, uh, and uh, it was quite surprising for me. And the other thing surprising was the uh, uh, that the score the, the the lake that scored the lowest actually received the highest score in environmental dimension. Uh, so these two things were something that uh, was out of the uh, something that i didn't expect and uh, uh, the like i mentioned that uh, uh, these results were also shared with the expert and uh, the panel discussion with the local experts for the input uh, on uh, the results and the applicability of the tool was discussed and the experts also agreed to uh, this uh, hypothesis that this was not expected and uh, we discussed as to why could this uh, be possibly the output so uh, this this is the vastrapur lake which received the highest score and the thaltej which received the highest in uh, the environmental dimension uh, so what was discussed uh, or what was interpreted out of this results was that uh, thaltej lake is one of the very few lakes in amdavad which is not completely developed like uh, like the vastrapur lake in this picture and uh, this lake still has its own uh, ecology survived uh, in terms of it is not uh, completely disturbed like for example the natural edge of the lake is still not concretized like uh, in the vastrapur lake and uh, it is uh, the lake which retains uh, water around the year unlike other lakes in amdabad it has uh, this uh, massive green uh, shrubs and trees the green cover is more but this is still not tagged as one of the light light lakes or one of the developed lakes or the lakes that people like to go because vastrapur is more uh, preferred lake in the neighborhood uh, so the uh, interviews that was done by uh, the, done in the uh, in the lake itself during the field uh, interviews the users they prefer going to vastapu lake and uh, not to the thaltej lake they like the lake uh, vastapu lake more because of the amenities because of the services uh because of the other uh, recreational activities but then uh, one of the common feedback was that they want fountains in the lake and it was mostly how they perceived the lake so the social dimension had factors which were uh, to a larger extent dependent on how the users of the lake perceived the lake uh, uh, perceived the condition of the lake and versus where uh, when we see at thaltej lake there is uh, there is no such activities that can be done uh, and uh, they 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 really don't like to uh, see the condition of the lake uh, as it is uh, so uh, but when it comes to the environmental factors uh, it it scored the uh, highest and uh, vastrapur actually scored the overall 
higher score because of uh, these activities. So it, it has a higher economic score. It has uh, it has a balanced score in all the three dimension, resulting in a, a higher overall sustainability index score. Uh, so this was um, the most uh, different thing. And uh, I focused in my thesis on discussing this, that how which factors uh, were considered and how it affected the results and what can be uh, the interpretation of that, how uh, these uh, results can be uh, used in decision making, uh, and uh, uh, all the factors, how it affects the overall condition of the school, uh, of the lake, and uh, that we should uh, definitely not ignore uh, the other factors and uh, uh, look into the multidimensional values of the lake. Uh, so the major uh, main conclusions that were uh, desired from the study was that uh, using this tool, uh, considering this uh, uh, decision support tool, gave new insights into the multidimensional values of the interlinked lakes, which are otherwise neglected, uh, consciously or subconsciously. And uh, the multi-criteria analysis-based uh, decision support tool, it contributes to the overall sustainability uh, of the lakes and uh, but it is important uh, and it is acknowledged that the mechanism of the tool is uh, to be well understood applied and interpreted and it's a quite a lengthy process uh, yes but it uh, uh, the assessment of the sustainability index score and the decision making insights they definitely uh, help us in re-evaluating the uh, lake development approach and also negotiate the policy recommendations. Uh, incorporating uh, expert knowledge in the interviews to identify the factors uh, and uh, during the Delphi method to identify its importance uh, and the stakeholder inputs uh, on the field. Uh, it helped in validating, contextualizing, and evaluating the uh, interlinking approach, which is right now a uh, uh, top to bottom approach and uh, it's only done by the planning authorities but uh, the, it is important uh, uh, which was found which was acknowledged and found in the study that to incorporate everyone's views uh, during the planning process uh, and uh, the key recommendations uh, that after from the results that was uh, made was uh, it is important to communicate the multidimensional values of the lakes to increase awareness and to change perspectives uh, we uh, during the study uh, we also visited uh, I also visited the schools of uh, around the lakes and and to how they are contributing to uh, creating or increasing awareness among the young children. Uh, so uh, it was interesting to see whether or not they visit the lakes in their local neighborhood. So it is important to communicate uh, uh, this multidimensionality of uh, multidimensional values of the lake. And more importantly, to uh, the planning uh, authorities should adopt a more inclusive approach by incorporating expert knowledge and stakeholder inputs uh, during the planning and implementation process. And uh, the planning process should consider all the relevant social, environmental, and economic uh, factors. Uh, and the uh, implementation uh, based on these insights should follow sustainable practices uh, like, for example, to maintain the natural edge of the lake, to preserve its natural ecosystem and not use hard materials like concrete. Uh, and uh, so other sustainable practices which uh, retains the natural ecosystem of the lake. And uh, to adopt a comprehensive evaluation uh, approach uh, for the interlinked lakes. Uh, so using uh, evaluation uh, like multi-criteria evaluation at different uh, stages and to enable monitoring and assessment uh, tools for the uh, during the planning uh, process. So the main contribution uh, uh, that the research made, made was to develop a conceptual tool to evaluate the degree of sustainability of the interlinked lakes. So the design of the tool itself, uh, the multi-criteria index, the uh, weights and uh, the weights in the index and the computation method to measure the indicators in the index. And the second was to uh, the application of the tool, uh, the insights uh, that the tool gave and the effects of using such a comprehensive method like multi-criteria evaluation 
uh, which considered the uh, relevant factors uh, for the overall sustainability of lake ecosystem uh, by incorporating uh, uh, different experts and stakeholder inputs uh, and uh, initiating the multi-objective negotiation between them. Uh, so these were the two major contributions uh, that the research tried to make. And uh, uh, this is where I'll conclude and open for questions. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Mehak. Thanks for this wonderful presentation. So now I would like Vishal, uh, as we are discussing with Professor Vishal Narayan, and please continue with the questions. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, thank you, Meg, first for the talk, uh, my compliments, uh, very nicely done, very crisp, focused, uh, good use of visuals. And uh, just to uh, set the context, so what I gathered is that, of course, you know, as uh, Ekta said in the beginning, it's an important topic about lakes. Um, you know, many cities face challenges and problems uh, with encroachment, with the urban flooding. Uh, we talk of the loss of the urban commons, the peri-urban commons. So it's, of course, you know, a very relevant um, and uh, let's say um, a very relevant and important topic in the context of cities. That's one. And within that subject, you um, you basically, um, you know, uh, your talk was about uh, how to systematically study the multi the multi-dimensional values of interlinked lakes for decision making. Mm -hmm. And uh, you developed an index, right, to mm -hmm. um, to measure the degree of the sustainability of the interlinked lakes and among the methods that you use, you worked with the Delphi method, which I found uh, relevant and innovative. And then you presented your key recommendations about the need to communicate, right, the uh, the multiple uh, dimensional values of the lakes uh, and to increase awareness and change. And at the same time, you have, uh, you know, processes of uh, lake planning that are more inclusive and deliberative and which allow uh, the incorporation of a wide diversity of perspectives and viewpoints, right? So uh, that's uh, what I gathered from the talk in a nutshell, right? And then I will uh, raise some questions just to encourage you to elaborate on some of the points that you said to, you know, to flesh out or to substantiate some of the issues that you raised. So one is that uh, I am, of course, so I would like to know a bit more about this whole notion of interlinking mm -hmm. of the lakes, right? And uh, because even historically, when you look at lakes in many parts of the country, uh, you know, in the south especially, so we see, you know, cascading lakes, right? Or we see lakes that were, when they were built and when they were designed, they were designed as interlinked, interlinked lakes, right? So if you go to Udayapur, if you go to south, et cetera, et cetera, right? And there was a certain ecological and technological logic behind that about why they were built as cascades or as interlinking lakes. So in this case, this is slightly different. So I'd like to know a little bit more about how this whole idea of interlinking the lakes came about. Uh, what were the, uh, what was the, uh, you know, so all kinds of uh, policy choices are backed by certain narratives, like some, some kind, there's some legitimize, some logic to it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you could start by saying a little bit more about uh, how this whole idea of interlinking came about, what was the narrative, the logic presented one. And I'm also curious about like, how old are these lakes, uh, you know, from the time that they were first built. So, uh, so, and then we move to other questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think, uh, uh, like you said, the cascading lakes, the best example is also the lakes in Udaipur. Uh, so yeah. when they were built, it was uh, logic logically built that it uh, flows the water into uh, when it's, uh, it, it goes into the other lake as it uh, it's filled. So, uh, but in case of Ahmedabad, these lakes are natural lakes. And like in the case of Udaipur, and uh, the settlements have actually grown uh, around these lakes uh, uh, since when the city started developing. And uh, this interlinking project was only started recently. Uh, so uh, these lakes are naturally uh, through the underground aquifers uh, connected in directly, indirectly. Uh, but due to the urban development, which was like massive in case of Ahmedabad, uh, this connection was somehow, I think, uh, the, the lakes were drying up and uh, uh, which is not an issue in itself, but it also uh, was giving, uh, I mean, it also, uh, urban flooding issues were also coming up front. So uh, the research did not uh, really uh, justify as to whether or not interlinking is a good uh, alternative to this issue. 
uh, but given that, that they are doing it how it should be done because uh, in case of Ahmedabad uh, this is done like by connecting the lakes physically with uh, underground pipes and uh, when I studied some cases also uh, in some uh, other like global cases, uh, they were doing it more like uh, using sustainable solutions like using open canals, for example, mm. uh, which was also used for as a public waterfront, which was also used for transport, which was uh, uh, and it was more uh maintenance free relatively i would say in case of amdaba these connections are somewhere lost and uh, there is no uh, know how of uh, what are the pipes doing right now or what is the condition of the pipes whether or not they are still there what happens to the uh, water flowing with it and uh, so specific issues like water quality because uh, the water quality uh, i also looked into the water quality change over 10 years uh, so the lake, which is partially at the end of the whole network in the city, is actually the, the water quality of the Sarkhish Lake is deteriorating uh, over years. Uh, that is what the numbers told me also. So uh, I think uh, it was interesting for me because I also studied uh, these lakes in my bachelor's. Uh, and it was interesting for me to take it at a more planning perspective uh, in my master's. And then uh, I was keen on uh, knowing that how this interlinked lakes uh, are uh, how are they performing over years uh, that uh, because I didn't find any study as to what was the condition of the lake in for example in 2004 and what is the condition now so there was no such temporal analysis uh, I found which which told me that after interlinking uh, this was the improvements or this was something that uh, that didn't go well uh, so some of the factors uh, for example like i said in water quality uh, or in groundwater level uh, i could see the differences uh, so the tool also uh, the the tool that i developed also gave me that uh, flexibility to uh, uh, handle multiple factors uh, which is not done otherwise and also to look at the temporal uh, scale that uh, uh, some data was collected or, or was a data that was before 2004 or after 2004 and some was the recent data. Uh, so this condition of the lake, uh, the scores also reflect as to what is the journey of the lakes after they were interlinked. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. And also, Nick, in the beginning, you said that, you know, this, uh, this interlinking of lakes has been a big point of debate in the city right so i would encourage you to talk a little bit more about that like i mean who are the groups so you know when something becomes a point of debate they're usually narratives and counter that so, this, so there's an argument for there's an argument against so who are the different uh, groups in ahmedabad who've taken these positions and what has what have been the points of debate around this so i'd like to know a little bit more about that yeah uh, i'm yes. sorry to uh, intervene in between uh, can you please close the ppt so that we can have a clear view of all the speakers Yes, uh, sure. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so uh, I contacted uh, initially uh, Mansi Ma'am uh, for uh, giving me this uh, little bit insights into because she's uh, like <laughs> uh, into this field since so, so many years. And uh, uh, we had a meeting and then she added me to this uh, water group um, which is uh, the water experts in Ahmedabad and she connected me to these experts and also to multiple experts also uh, outside this group uh, who are not in Ahmedabad uh, and uh, I contacted this expert so these experts are from different backgrounds so some have been uh, they were working with the ORDA or they are into academics uh, uh, teaching uh, related to water issues in urban planning or in architecture some are into practice, uh, some are a combination of both. So these uh, 11 experts that uh, uh, were uh, helping me with the whole process, uh, it gave a very good palette of uh, different uh, uh, opinions and different backgrounds, different expertise. Uh, so there were civil engineers also who were uh, into water management and everything. So they, they had like a different perspective. Uh, so these uh, experts, uh, I think uh, they really uh, helped me into 
uh, understanding the problem uh, in the Ahmedabad or understanding the uh, uh, water issues specifically in the case of Ahmedabad. So even if you, uh, even if when I reflect upon uh, what was the weights derived uh, for these factors, it brought out the issues that were existing in Ahmedabad. Uh, for example, stakeholder participation. So currently uh, it's not uh, really done. So that was the highest important factor uh, ranked. Uh, so uh, talking with these experts, interacting with these experts, uh, uh, they not only gave me a good palette of uh, these factors, but also brought out the issues uh, that were uh, currently uh, uh, a problem in the case of Ahmedabad. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, thanks, Ben. And you know, so actually, so there are also a few students uh, who you know who are uh, who are attending this event, and and it's your thesis. And in your thesis, you always make some methodological choices about you know what's the best method to use, what's the best way to go about you know collecting data. And for you, uh, you know, the Delphi method, I see that you played a very important role. So mm -hmm. I think uh, for some of our audience, it would be nice to know more about the Delphi method. Uh, you know, what's it all about? How is it different from other ways of collecting data, why it was you know, particularly suited to your kind of uh, research inquiry, right? You spoke about it a little bit, but, and you also spoke a little bit about its limitations how and how you overcame that. But maybe you could say a little bit more about the Delphi method, you know, what kinds of intellectual inquiries, research inquiries it's best suited for, when should students use it if they have to use it in their research? Uh, okay, first of all, I would say that it's a very time consuming and very engaging method. Uh, and uh, I was uh, very lucky to have uh, the seven experts who responded in each round. Because uh, when you send out the survey, you, you practically you just have to forget about it for a few days and uh, actually a few weeks. But uh, given that my time was limited for my master's thesis, uh, but the experts were very kind enough to respond to me. Uh, so, but it actually took me about uh, one and a half or two months to complete uh, that uh, all the three rounds. Uh, so, Delphi method is uh, uh, in a simple terms is a consensus building exercise. Uh, it can be done uh, like I did in a form of survey in indirect. Uh, in, uh, so there is no uh, direct uh, interaction among the participants. And it can also be done uh, directly, like uh, on a on, like on a roundtable, uh, where they discuss uh, and they come to a uh, overall consensus of something. So in my case, uh, I wanted uh, the relative importance of the factors, uh, 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 like like also because the main main thing was that uh, yeah, there was a quite a long list of factors, uh, but all cannot be equally important. Uh, one can be more important than other, and uh, it's important to identify that uh, or to have uh, have that as an input in the tool, uh, because uh, that will bring out the actual uh, uh, issues, like I said, and also reflect on the uh, sustainability index scores. Uh, so this deriving the relative importance of the weights in this matter was uh, really important uh, because otherwise uh, it would not highlight the things that it did. Uh, so I sent out a survey form to these experts uh, to rank the uh, factors between the scale of one to five. And from round two, they could see the answers of the other experts anonymously. And uh, then they can change the answers or they cannot change. And then I can see that uh, which experts uh, uh, change their answer and whether or not the consensus is increasing or decreasing. And uh, yeah, it was very, very interesting. But uh, like I said, it was very time consuming. Uh, and uh, I, yeah, I, I think I was just lucky enough and I had very good palette of experts. Uh, who gave me time uh, but uh, uh, yeah the limitations apart from the time consuming part is also to reflect upon what this course means uh, and it also relates to what is the background of uh, uh, these experts uh, so I could not really to be honest I could not elaborate too much on that uh, in my report itself uh, because due to the uh, sub rules uh, here in Netherlands, I cannot uh, uh, share who the experts were and what their background was. Uh, 
directly into the reports i cannot share that uh, but uh, i i did have that kind of uh, discussion as to what uh, uh, this consensus uh, changing means and it brings out brings out something uh, that i i could not uh, maybe myself have figured that out uh, and only the experts or only the local experts could uh, point me to that uh, so it's a very interesting way to uh, bring out something that is not noticed and uh, that is not really talked about and also uh, not just brings out but it also gives a space to discuss uh, something uh, oh, yeah. yeah yeah okay thanks and uh, so um, yeah one last thing from my side you know is that so um, let's suppose there are students now who want to work on the lakes in ahmedabad right mm-hmm. so from your work uh, what might be future areas of work what might be ways of taking this forward like so if, if a student came to you you know i want to you've done work you know on the lakes of ahmedabad i want to do uh, some new work uh, what direction should i take right so what mm-hmm. would be ways of uh, taking this research forward what would be a uh, follow up activities or what would be new issues that you think uh, the lakes in ahmedabad you know deserve attention or research on uh yes uh, i actually uh, thought about this during my just before my defense uh, and uh, i think uh, taking this forward would be one of the ways would be to so i had this tool developed and uh, i briefly discussed about how or not whether or not it can be applied but uh, and also briefly discussed about what these course means for each of the lakes uh, and uh, but maybe that can be more uh, elaborated or focused on uh, that uh, how this course or how this insights can be uh, actually implemented or and can be actually considered during the decision making so what could be the design solutions or what could be the uh list of to do or to not do things like maximum talked in one of the sessions in uh, wednesday for water that what should be done and what should not be done what should be stopped to do uh, should we stop to do so more talking into the implementation part of uh, this uh, tool uh, the results that the tool gave could be uh, one of the directions that uh, this research can be taken forward uh, and i think uh, Uh, it can be a good way to also uh, do this in in temporal uh, uh, more temporal dimension so uh, doing this the same thing after every few years to evaluate whether or not this uh, interlinking done is uh, mm. how is it bringing out or how how is it affecting the condition of the lakes so doing a temporal analysis every few years using the same factors uh, or the identified factors uh, that that is also uh, both ways possible uh, but basically to uh, yeah monitor the condition of the lakes i would say great okay so you know i can go on talking to you about this but uh, i have to respect time and also others uh, in the audience may have questions so i'll stop here now and i'll uh, hand over the digital floor back to ekta to uh, to take other questions and to continue the discussion forward thank you Thanks, Vishal. We were absorbed uh, during the conversation. It's a wonderful conversation. And um, anybody from the audience would like to ask a question from my head? So, Mansi, would you like to add on something and would like to ask my head? You know, uh, thank you, thank you, Mahak, for another professional presentation. Very proud of you as uh, one of my dear students who is stu- studying lakes in the country. and uh, thanks vishal for engaging her so uh, well uh, and uh, honestly speaking ekta i get scared the moment i hear the word mehak potecha uh, because of the very point uh, she started doing this thesis and till today and uh, she has engaged me more than my original thesis students to be honest and uh, i can reveal now that i was one of her expert uh, among the 11 and going through those rounds and vishal just to let you know i had warned her not to take up delphi method as a masters project you know because it's a good phd uh, method uh, so my question to mehak now comes is from the method itself and the results you get because you are using it as a decision making tool mm-hmm. uh, the risk of this kind of methods is very much evident from your results you know because the uh, if we look at uh, the lakes of amdavad and we see that um, vastrapur lake itself is the 
not so much like lakes by environmentalists. And the moment we are talking about, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, protecting the lakes or conserving the lakes and a method which is used and you are you are you want to con canvas this method as a planning tool and Vastrapur comes up as the most sustainable lake model through the method which we are saying then there's a huge risk in talking about it which means did you choose your indicators rightly you know because now it becomes very tricky because Mehek Potecha endorses that Vastrapur model is the best model according to the study results. So my, my point, uh, our question to you here is, uh, when you take up these kind of methods and you also say that this is a, a very good tool for decision making, you have to add a word of caution to uh, the users because you're talking about regular monitoring. They can do 100 Vastrapurs here, which is they intend to do, let me tell you, your Thaltej Lake, which is the best environmentally result lake you announced today, yesterday there was a news that they are going to invest in Thaltej Lake to make it like a Vastrapur Lake. Now, I have a question for you as a professional. Because you endorse Vastrapur as the most sustainable model, would you encourage decision-making tools to be using the same model for Thaltej now? What do you do uh, with your decisions now? No, definitely not. Uh, and we also discussed this during the panel discussion that it was really, really uh, something that was not expected. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, so that's why uh, in the recommendations also I have specifically, seeing the results, I have specifically mentioned that it is very important to uh, uh, interpret and understand the results of the tool uh, very critically. Uh, because looking at the sustainability index scores, yes, it gives uh, uh, the idea what we what you just said. Uh, but if you look at the indicator score, uh, which considered that whether or not the natural uh, edge of the lake is maintained uh, and uh, what is the uh, water quality, for example, so these indicators they score low in Vastrapur Lake. So uh, if if I just look at the overall score. I might get the overall idea of how these lakes are doing uh, because it considers 37 indicators. That's a lot to understand uh, just from the number that what the score means. So uh, whoever is using the tool for decision making needs to be very much uh, aware of uh, this thing and to look into how these indicators are individually performing as well. So when I take up uh, the Vastrapur Lake, I can see from the tool that uh, this is the score it gets for each of the 37 indicators. And if I want to improve the uh, condition of uh, the Vastrapur Lake, because these the scores are still relative. It's not that uh, it's doing uh, the best. Uh, so these scores, so I can still look from the tool that uh, under the environmental factors, these, these indicators, for example, this natural lake, it has a zero score for uh, Vastrapur Lake because it's all, no, nothing is natural anymore. Uh, so whoever is using the tool, maybe uh, it is important, not maybe, it's definitely important for them to uh, look into each of the indicators and not just the number, the sustainability index score uh, only. Uh, first thing and second thing, I think uh, I felt uh, what could be improved uh, in my study as well was whom I was interviewing on the field. Uh, because the perception of people uh, for the lakes is uh, very much uh, into like what you said that these people, they uh, recreationally, they like the Vastrapu Lake more. Uh, but educating these people about the multidimensional value and uh, why uh, Saltej Lake is not a bad lake and why Vastrapur Lake is in somehow we need to improve uh, the uh, planning process itself. I think uh, that, that's a long way to go to convey this to the people. Uh, but uh, also, uh, I think... Uh, designing the questions in a way that uh, to implant this idea into when, when I was interviewing could also be, I think, improved than what I did. 
but yes the factors which factors were considered uh, which factors that was missed out whom i was interviewing and the individual indicator score uh, these these things need to be looked into uh, more critically when you are using this tool uh, sorry uh, ekta i will quickly take one little uh, question and also i think mahek will realize it and do it in her phd because i am very much after her to do her phd <laughs> uh i uh, and i know every word of your thesis you know that right yes. so uh would you not consider the thesis which you did for nearly a year uh, mm -hmm. that this thesis was more about comparing these lakes vis a vis really talking about the flow of values or flow of sustainability between the lakes because you rightly mentioned that you do not know whether the connections are working or not right yes. so the thesis was actually not in the connections of the lake because um, if if the if the water was flowing if the ecosystem was flowing from one lake to other which is what vishal was talking about the cascading of lakes and all in the past which we do not know whether happening or not and uh, you are aware that i have conducted that study with gautami and it is not happening it's an independent research we conducted for all the 11 lakes which are done in the interlinking now uh, what if, what also you could not understand is why was this project taken because there is no uh, there is no study which is done which is very valid so maybe in your recommendation uh, we it could have come out so would you uh, really not uh, consider that your study was more of comparing these five or six lakes vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the interlinking of lakes because interlinking of lakes if you had done your physical study area was actually between the lakes and not really the lakes i did think about it many times when we were discussing all through the year but then because you have chosen a method where you could not really ask people people who do not know about the lakes how will they know about the catchment area and command area so that's a big challenge to talk about lakes huh so you have lot to do in uh, your phd and uh, i will i think i will invite vaishali here who is a phd student from boston and she is around vaishali and studying lakes by the way of amdabad so i have brought her here so maybe vaishali you may uh, connect um, with mehak today on this platform you are already connected outside i suppose uh, if you have questions and uh, take it further from there okay vaishali Thank you, Mansi, and uh, congratulations, yeah. Mehak, uh, for finishing your master's defense. Uh, great you. work, but I agree with Man what Mansi had to say in terms of the shortcomings of the methodology. I completely acknowledge that Delphi is one of the common ways of prioritizing indicators in a sustainability index. And many of us, like even in my master's, that was one of the methods I had to consider. but i was wondering when you did uh, the literature review did you come mm -hmm. across any other methodology uh, that could have helped you in framing uh, your decision making i'm sorry i joined in a little late so i missed your initial presentation so sorry if i'm repeating something but i was just wondering that was there any other method that you under your advisor or experts thought of considering except delphi or semi delphi thank you uh yes um uh it was kind of a semi delphi method where one of the options was to uh, connect the experts on one platform for just one meeting and at the end of that meeting i would have the relative importance of the weights but i i thought that uh, that would be more difficult given that there were multiple experts and to bring them on one platform on with uh, in different time zones uh, on one platform uh at one time would be more difficult and also to navigate this discussion because i think uh, i i don't think at the end of the meeting these experts would have agreed on anything uh so i thought that uh, that would be more uh in terms of uh, for me to get the output from that meeting would be more uh, risky uh, whether or not i would get the output and the other one or the other option was to again go back to literature and uh, see which which of these factors are given the highest importance and that would be more qualitative that okay this is the most discussed uh, in literature and that factors would receive a higher uh, importance uh, rank uh, but i uh, again the risk was that uh, 
because the index was more, more contextualized to Ahmedabad uh, and it brought out the, the factors that was more relating to, relevant to the study areas that I would not get uh, these factors in other global literature. And uh, it would be uh, again, uh, risky to for me to depend on just literature to uh, identify these ways. Uh, so at the end, uh, uh, with my supervisors, we agreed that let's take this uh, risk of experimenting with the Delphi method. And uh, uh, the uh, condition was that it's okay if I fail. <laughs> So that was what we agreed before we started, that it's okay if I don't reach anywhere with the Delphi method. I think that's great because in academics, when you fail, that's just an opportunity for you to yes. extend your research into a PhD or a postdoc. Yes, yes, exactly. That was what was discussed. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. for this lovely discussion. Um, I would like to add that nothing is like a failure. Everything is an experience. So we should keep learning and uh, moving forward to do something good. And definitely um, today we learned that how social, economic and environment factors are needs to be balanced for every action. So linking the lakes can uh, contribute to a lot of uh, things like uh, controlling the floods and drying up the, up of the land, uh, sorry, lakes. So this method needs to be understood and more research should be done on this and experimentation should be done so that we can save our lakes and also control on the pollution uh, of our uh, water body and definitely balancing the ecosystem because water ecosystem is very important for the natural clean, uh, cleaning of the water. We need not to do much of our that. We just allow the nature to work on this. So interlinking the lakes, controlling the pollutants, considering the social, environment, and economical factors is very important in all this research. Thank you, Mahek, and uh, thank you, Mansi, for uh, taking up these topics and uh, creating the awareness so that the common people should also know that how different methods are available and how we can contribute. Every person needs to contribute for the water resources because water is life. So thank you all, and it's time. I, I don't want to go, want to continue this discussion. I hope all here wish to continue, but definitely time is the constraint. So thank you all for this wonderful session, joining us. And now we invite you to join our another sessions. The next session will be on um, August 26th. We have Water Arts with Ship, Ship Shankar Roy on digital paintings on water and domain. So join us on uh, 